Poppy Playtime's release teasers and additional information from our game developers reveal some huge aspects about what to expect in this upcoming chapter, which we're going to start with covering all the rumors about this new mystery antagonist and what it could potentially be, because I'm fairly confident we now know. And the key detail that puts everything into place for us here is the fact our textures for this chapter 3 villain are both scaly and furry, and that our developers give us the hint to look out for purple and yellow. But what does this tell us? I'd like to say these details actually reveal to us exactly what this thing is. Going through our options of who this could be regarding the toys we already know, I'm pretty confident these details completely rule out Candy Cat as being our big bad, taking out all their anger on Huggy right here. Not only is the main color of Candy Cat a lighter shade of blue, sharply contrasting the more royal shade of dark purple we see depicted here, but the textures simply don't line up at all. However you paint it with the potential claw comparison, cats do not have scaly skin. So to me, we're easily able to rule it out. And I think our design and what we know about the new villain discredits another commonly thrown around solution, which is that this thing is actually a bird. Because that is actually a piece of the puzzle we need to use here. Yes, Bunzo the Bunny's story shows him finding an egg along his journey, but we never see a depiction of what possibly could have laid it there in the first place. There must be a bird-like creature involved here, right? And on top of that, the game developers have been tossing around the possibility of a bird-like creature for some time now. But there's a big problem here. The fur. In all the sketched out models for rejected characters, we see the use of feathers as birds have feathers, not fur. So at the very least to make these connections, you'd have to consider that there's actually more going on here. And in addition, the sort of proportions displayed for a normal bird don't match up with the claws and the eyes being where they are, unless the patterns here regarding this whole mystery were right in front of our face this entire time. The concept of a swappable, our key to this mystery, is the idea that multiple depictions of animals are able to be merged together into one. PJ Pugapillar in the form of a combination between a dog and a caterpillar, Cat B obviously in the form of a cat and a bee, the theme of this animal combination is one mob entertainment is well familiar with. So what happens when you mix attributes of an aggressive bird-like creature and a more lion-like fur texture? you get a swap -a And diving down even deeper, we also know exactly what kind of bird this is. There's proof here. Mob Entertainment have subtly dropped character clues before, with chapter two kicking off a teaser in which we hear the Itsy Bitsy Spider song being sung before our big reveal of none other than a spider-like big antagonist, Mommy Longlegs. And they do it again for chapter three, tying their upcoming games with the statement, it will be a hoot, hoot is a pretty specifically chosen way to describe your upcoming projects, if you ask me. Could this be an owl? In terms of our bird-like features here, we must also consider the observation of our glowing red eyes and the fact another hint given by the developers was a sun and a moon. Not only are most owls more active at night specifically, they also have the best night vision out of any living creature. So in terms of a bird-like creature with scaly talon-like claws being associated with nighttime, what else would we be dealing with here if not an owl? Some of them literally have glowing red eyes. Remember how the very hint given by developers was to look out for purple and yellow, the purple marking out what we're clearly already looking at here, and the yellow being a little more tricky. You see, in terms of what we have to work with, yellow is actually the same exact color of one of the mob entertainment scrapped characters for Poppy Playtime Chapter 2. Not only is it connected to a bird here, but it's also specifically connected to an owl. Notice the difference in face feathers with the right bearing a strong resemblance to a barn owl specifically. Gasp. But going back to the point that our fur and scaly skin contrast means we're working with the swappable here, a bird-like creature being mixed with a more mammal-like predator is nothing new. Look no further than the griffin, for example. A bird-like mythical creature with the body of a lion along with the head and talons of a bird most commonly associated with a mix of a lion and an eagle specifically. But due to the creativity of these normal character designs, I doubt we'd have to limit ourselves to say that this bird portion 100% has to be connected to an eagle. Because again, there are so many nudges towards an owl. Full credit to Glowing Barns for the additional information that the purple fur color we see depicted is also associated with monarchy and royalty. And in some depictions of mythology, griffins were regarded as protectors of the divine, of the monarchs who were in control. This translates over to his role as a sort of play care protector. You know, 
until it tries to kill us. But our even bigger connection is what ties it all into place for us. What's really gonna cement this thing in as the 100% confirmed big bad of chapter three, maybe. We know all of our antagonist designs are specifically linked to certain popular toys of the past. Huggy Wuggy resembling a slightly more deranged version of a sock monkey, Mommy Longlegs correlating more with the Betty Spaghetti model or a Stretch Armstrong perhaps, and although kind of scuffed because of the new element of a swappable also being at play here, we need some sort of connection. And hours upon hours of digging later, I think I finally found it. For starters, I think this contrast of features that links us to a swappable means this time things are going to be slightly different. There isn't necessarily a popular toy connection with the combination of our owl features and our furry mammal features. But what we do have is both separated factors. And we find this in the form of a normal teddy bear, lining up with the huge popularity and time period of the other antagonists along with the Furby. Our potential owl portion of this thing shows a strong connection to the fact the owl Furby is literally the name given to a version of Generation 2. Having a similarity to a Furby-like creature matches perfectly with the developer's villain description needing to be a creature kids can get along with but can also be scary with a few altercations. Connecting with the soothing mother-like nature of mommy long legs flipping into a sinister terrifying horror sequence. Furbies are regarded as cute looking by some, but also somewhat off-putting, enough to literally have their own horror game written about them. It's already something that's been good enough to use before. Furbies in general are regarded as owl-like creatures, or like a mix between an owl and a hamster, according to Google, but our specifically named owl furby was a part of the 1998 generation which is actually the same exact release year of Betty Spaghetti. The very link I used for Mommy Longlegs. And damn straight, these things right here were popular too. It all lines up with our owl connections from Mob Entertainment in the form of our night connection, them specifically saying the word hoot and doing a little arm swing as if I wouldn't pick up on it, matching our Furby's tendency of being both cute and unsettling, and our furry mammal-like body following suit with the classic design of the popular teddy bear, which again is perceived as adorable, but tweaking the design a little to resemble more of a real bear would make me pee myself. I think the combination between the two is our only conceivable way, at least to me, to match up every single point with our analysis of this antagonist. <clears throat> yeah, um, that's my guess, if that wasn't clear. But alongside this new chapter release, we also have huge new information for a similar mascot horror game known as FNAF Ruin. So if there's huge reveals regarding everything exposed to us about what we're gonna be looking at with this whole thing, click for more. There's a lot.